Hello and welcome back to the Nerva Beacon podcast. Yes, folks, we are back. It's been a couple of months um, because stuff, life gets in the way, but we are now back and we're ready to talk about some Doctor Who. I am Glenn, uh, one of your hosts for this thing, and the other host who is back after an extended leave is, of course, your friend and mine, Lee. Hello. Hello, Lee. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. No. Yes. Well, we won't go into that. No. <laughs> we don't need to talk about that. Let's talk about fun stuff. Otherwise, how have you been? Um, this and that, up and down. We're getting a lot better now. Yes, because you uh, had a bit of a inf- chest infection earlier on in the week, didn't you? Yeah, oh God, I thought I couldn't get up the hill. So I live at the bottom of the hill now, and uh, getting oh, right, so up the it's going to town is just an absolute killer. And I thought, oh my God, it's going to turn into pneumonia. But nothing needs that. <laughs> Brilliant. All right, so, so it was an actual hill, not a sort of metaphysical hill. No, it was an actual real hill. Because I'm over that hill. <laughs> yeah. Apparently. I'm over that hill too. <laughs> well, you're, you're, you're just on the cusp. I think once you reach 41, because you're, you're not 41 yet, are you? Nim. Nim. Well, there you go. You see, you're on the cusp of being over the hill, so enjoy it while it lasts. But I'm actually physically over the hill now. Oh, dear. <laughs> Never mind. Which is great. But there you go. Um, any Doctor Who stuff that you've been buying, looking at, getting over the last few months at all? Um, mostly audios. Um, I don't, when I was uh, when I didn't have internet, I downloaded Deezer in uh, Costa because I hate Spotify or however you pronounce it. And they've got every single bloody or Doctor Who audio I could ever want on there. So oh, cool. A few of those. Oh, excellent! I've been I've been listening to a lot. Of Doctor Who audio stuff, um, because I've been getting either giving it or I, I've been buying here and there. So I've been, um, just finished listening to the last set of Fourth Doctor Adventures before the new series, which I have got now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the last one with the uh, Romana, the, the one set season 18. Mm-hmm. So Maroon Scarf time. And, uh, I bought Doctor Who, uh, Dormat for the Flash. <laughs> there you go. So it's bigger on the inside. <clears throat> It literally is, it looks like it's this place. So you open oh, the door, it's really tiny, then you open another door, and there's just this there's a 30 foot hallway. Uh, yeah. Straight into an absolutely massive living room. Oh, cool. So it is pretty much TARDIS like. Yes. Oh, excellent stuff. You can get some wallpaper, Randall wallpaper, that'd be awesome. Ooh, don't tempt me. Because <laughs> Clayton, I think Clayton Hickman was advertising, oh, look, it's this stuff uh, with, with spots on it. They're not Randall's, honest. <laughs> so. Oh, I'll have to have a look. And, uh, the uh, second bedroom's uh, painted TARDIS blue for me, and I'm going to keep it. Good. Yes. Well, that saves you a job anyway, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> Which is always good. Anything else you've been up to? Uh, well, just before Christmas, before, well, you know, I went to see the uh, Twice Upon a Time. Mm. Newcastle Cathedral and the cut the regeneration off. Well, well, we'll talk about that. To, to be fair, that you didn't really miss much because they did that, did you? Um, it was brilliant. They had the tortoise there. And, well, not the real thing, but you know what I mean. Yeah. So, how, how come that happened then? Was it just a, a showing they were doing, or? Yeah, the, uh, the BBC decided that the North East uh, was a good place to. To show all the new uh, things that were coming out for Christmas, like uh, Inside Number Nine, the new Link mm. film, and the Doctor Who Christmas special, and uh, they had this, they ran this lottery for tickets, and I put my name in, and uh, I got, and I got a Doctor Who ticket. I was over. Oh, excellent. Well, they couldn't get much better than that for you, could it? Yeah. And uh, you, you, you enjoyed it in general, the experience. Oh, yes, it was brilliant. <laughs> and I know what you didn't enjoy. Having to not tell me what was going on. Yeah, not <laughs> tell anyone what went on. <laughs> I wouldn't have minded, that, but there you go. I'm, I'm glad you didn't. Yeah. Um, so, well done. Anything else? That's it, really. Oh, there you go. Cool. Um, me, I've been, I've had a bit of a Doctor Who week this week. I don't know why. I've been getting, you know, you know what I'm like. I go in fits and starts and things and a sort of cycle round to, to things. But at the moment, I seem to be heavily into Doctor Who again, so which is good. Um, so as I say, I've been listening to loads of the audios at work. The, the job I do allows me to put headphones on and listen to stuff. Mm-hmm. While most people do listen to music, I, I can't be doing that. So I've been listening to, to Doctor Who stuff 
which is good. So big, big finish, always good for that. Yep. Um, so yeah, the, the fourth Doctor Adventures I've, I've been listening to. Um, the other one that's quite good, uh, and if nobody's heard it, you should hear it. Uh, the classic Doctor's New Monsters, or New Monsters Classic Doctors, I forget which way around they say. But it's things like, um, there's a fifth Doctor one with the Empress of the Ragnos. And uh, the Vashta Narada with the fourth of eight Doctors. Mm-hmm. And the other one I've been listening to is the Carrier Knights with the sixth Doctor. Wait, when the, which kind of makes sense when you think about it, because obviously Sixie is quite verbose and um, full of words, and he, he likes his word play, and obviously Carrier Knights, that's sort of their thing as well, isn't it? So, um, But it's all little things in the show where they say, oh, I've met them before. Um, then obviously Tem goes, I named the Carrier Knights. Uh, and says, you know, I've met them before. Well, this is where they've met them before, effectively, uh, which is a nice little conceit. Um, so, they are very good. Um, I, I can re- definitely recommend them. Um, I had a bit of a Doc 2 DVD by the other day. Um, I bought Robot, Brain of Morbius, and Vengeance on Varos, mm-hmm. um, which is great because it's, it's more documentaries to watch. Mm. I do love the documentaries that uh, To Entertain do. Yeah, I do. Uh, some of them better than others, but at least now we know that Ian Levine won't be involved with any of them. Because <laughs> he used to be. And then all of a sudden, his name stopped appearing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they finally had enough of him. Yeah, especially now after the comments he made about uh, Geordie Whitaker and Chibnall. Oh, God. I've completely ignored all of them. I, I don't listen to what Ian Levine says. I, I just don't understand the man. Um He's supposedly this massive fan, but he seems to really hate the show. <laughs> yeah, I know. So I, I don't, I don't get it. Six, um, uh, Mad Lamy, can't remember his name. Lawrence, somebody. Oh uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, him. I know what you mean. Um, interesting enough, um, I was watching Trials and Tribulations, the the Sixth Doctor uh, documentary on one of the Trial of the Time Lords. Uh-huh. Um, Chibnall's on it because there, there's a clip of Open Air from 1986 and Open Air, if you don't know, was kind of like a right to reply, points of view extended show. Yeah, I remember that. Um, what did you think of television this week? That kind of thing. Um, and and one of them was about Doctor Who. I think it was about Terror of the Vervoids and it had the Liverpool Doctor Who Society moaning about it. <laughs> and uh, Chibbers was on there, 15 year old Chibbers, the old uh, ginger thin bespectacled geeky boy that he was. Uh, saying that, oh, I didn't really like the story. Why didn't you like the story, Chris? Well, it was uh, too complicated. What? Well, I went, two minutes ago, you said it was too simple. Well, it is. I mean, it is too simple and too traditional. But the whole act's too complicated. So it's simultaneously, Chris, too complicated and too simple. Is that what you're saying? Yes. And saying, oh, how the wheel of fate has turned. <laughs> and now he is getting lectured to by 15-year-old, i.e. 40-year-old geeky boys. <laughs> oh, we don't like this turn of events. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like what you're doing. Ah, well, now you know how JNT felt. Yeah. <laughs> I, look, I have no massive love for JNT, as people know. I think some of his ideas were the dumbest things ever committed to paper, and as much as he says he loved the show, he wanted it to be his show, and he wanted it to be all about him. Yeah. Quite but... I didn't like about it. Most of yeah. Them. Mostly the clothes that you knew from where. Well, that was all to do with American branding, wasn't it? At the end of the day, he wanted to, to be big in America because he wanted the show to, to do well and piss off the BBC. Mm. But he didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. Well, that, a lot of that was because of Jonathan Powell and really don't get me started. Because uh, <laughs> I'll be here all day about how much I hate that twat. But uh, anyway, I just thought it was funny that Chibnall was uh, having a go at, at the showrunners because... Oh, well, you know how that feels now, don't you? Um, but there we go. Um, other than that, oh, the other thing I did was um, I was bought by uh, my lovely partner a few years back now uh, a set of Doctor Who stamps when they did the 50th mm-hmm. Royal Mail Pack with some stamps, some Doctor Who stamps with each of the faces of the Doctors on it. And I never did put them up. And I thought, well, I should really I should really do that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I got a frame from Poundland. Poundland's very good for little photo frames. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anybody who ever wants anything like that, Poundland, brilliant. Um, I just basically mounted them and put them up and they look really nice. Yeah. It's a really nice thing. I've got those stamps as well, but uh, look at if I can remember where they are. Probably being thrown out by now. 
<laughs> oh, that's a shame. If it is. I had mine uh, in between some DVDs that I had, but I cleared a lot of them off and put my Doctor Who DVDs out because I thought, oh, I need them out. Uh, which led to me spending money, you know, because, you know, oh, I need more Doctor Who DVDs. To be fair, they're dirt cheap in HMV these days. They're like yeah. sort of five to, five to eight pounds. Yeah. Um, when you start getting up to ten, ten onwards, you start getting more expensive. Yeah. Um, even, even the new series ones aren't that expensive anymore. Um, but the one I do want, and they have got it, and I might get it next week uh, when I get some spare cash. Um, the key to time, they've got the whole of the key to time. I don't care if people say, oh, it's pointless, because he gives the key away at the end and he breaks it all back. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't like the stories. I like the pirate poly. I love the Stones of Blood. I love the stuff. We'll talk about this at one point when we actually do Stones of Blood. But I love the Stones of Blood because of, uh, is it Amelia? Yeah. The little, the little old lady. She's awesome. Yeah. And then you read about the actress who died not long after making, the, not after making the Stones of Blood. She was awesome. She was like sort of, um, she was a lesbian. Mm-hmm. And she had relationships with like American people in American high society. Yeah. And she was a, like a prominent actress in the sort of thirties and stuff. And it's like, she was great. She had an amazing life. Um, apparently Tom Baker loved her because of course he did. She was batty about, you know, both bl- bl- batty. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm gonna need to get the stone, um, not so, but the, the key to time box set. Plus it's for Amana One, <laughs> who I love. Um, but there you go. Uh, other than that, we, I've been updating the, um, the podcast page and I'd be on Facebook. I've been updating the Twitter page. We're getting lots more views on there, which is great because I really want to make a success of not only the podcast, but the podcast page as well. Yeah. So I keep putting up sort of like two things. You keep putting up stuff as well, which is great. Yeah. And we're sort of, I'm trying to network as much as I can as well and get sort of people interested in the podcast. So we are getting more followers. Um, and we may be having more guests on soon because I've uh, actually sent an email to the, the time ladies, Kezia and Beth. Yeah. Uh, who are in a great blog. Um, all about sort of uh, Doctor Who from a lady's perspective. Oh, yeah. I love that. I, love that. I think I follow, yeah, I do follow Beth on uh, Twitter. Yes. I follow, I follow both Beth, um, tweets all the time. Kezia, not so much, but, um, Kezia was actually on BBC News Ooh. the day that Jodie Whittaker got. And after the day after, I think the Monday after. Um, so yeah, they, they're, they're proper. Um, but yeah, it's a great website. You should totally check it out. Um, so I thought, yeah, let's, let's have some guests on and let's ask them on. Why not? Um, so that I'm just waiting to hear from them, but apparently they're, they're very busy. They will get in touch and we'll, we'll try and sort it out. Mm-hmm. But there you go. Excellent stuff. So yeah, Christmas happened and that the scenario that the crying, whining man babies, uh, tried to stop and put petitions out. <laughs> sad fucking sad bastards. Um, we now have a new doctor. Yay. And she is currently falling through the atmosphere. And we don't know what's going to happen. I, that's awesome. And we'll talk about that later. But uh, yes, we had a regeneration at Christmas. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> it was. It was. It was good. Um, it was good. Oh, so sorry? They were our only words, I think, weren't they? Oh, brilliant. They were. Oh, brilliant. Uh, and, and sadly, that was my worst case scenario. It's like, oh, no, she's, she's talking with a northern accent. But never mind. Uh, that, interestingly enough, that's the only problem I have with any of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, not another northern one. <laughs> At least she's not going to be angry northern this time. No, no. Because the last time we had a northern doctor, he was extremely angry, like, all the time. Yes. Even when he was happy, he was angry. <laughs> Although, to be fair, thinking about it, we've had three overtly northern doctors. Because we've had nine, we've got 13, and we've had eight. Yes. Yeah. Liverpool's in the north. Yeah. Well, Tom Baker yeah. was, uh, is Liverpool. But... Oh, yeah, but he's not of... He's, he's not... He's uh, RP accent. Yeah, it's just... Well, I, to be fair, I don't think Tom Baker ever had a Scouse accent. I just think he came out of the womb speaking <laughs> like that. <laughs> Hello, mother. <laughs> Hello, father. It's nice to be out of the womb. Um, yeah, I, I tend to think that he started speaking like that as soon as he started speaking, which, you know, makes me smile. But yes, um, she, she's here. I was, was going to say she's here. She's queer. She's not queer. I, I don't think she is, but there you go. Um, 
Although I have noticed lots and lots of already questionable pictures coming out of Deviant Art. Oh, Be- because Deviant Art. Yeah. It seems so. Stops them doing five and turbo stuff, doesn't it? Um, but yes, before, before the regeneration, we had a bit of a, a bit of an episode, uh, called Twice Upon a Time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Rather than go through bit by bit, because I've listened to quite a few podcasts that have actually done that and gone through bits, I thought we'd just sort of have a bit of a stream of consciousness ramble about it. Well, I liked it because there wasn't actually any villains in it. It wasn't much of a story, to be fair. Yeah, it was just mostly setting up the regeneration coffee and something for a marketers to um, act in. (laughs) Again? Yeah. So, twice? Twice he's been in it officially now? Yeah, that one with sort of cathedral in with Martha Lazarus experiment. Yeah, Lazarus experiment. Mm-hmm. Where he did his best Peter Davison impression again. Okay. <laughs> like Chinnery. He's actually. I found out the other day that wig is actually Chinnery's wig. Was it? Of, of the League of Gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. He, they, they wanted to find. They couldn't source him a wig. Um, so he said, I've got one, and he brought in Chinnery's wig. So the wig he wears in that, he's just playing Mister Chinnery. <laughs> Evil Mr. Chimney this time. Ex- exactly. Uh, but yeah, he's been in those two and he was in uh, those little sketches he did with Williams. Yeah. Um, ages back. I can't think what else he was there for. He was in. Oh, he was in a little cut in, in the cameo with uh, when, when the 11th Doctor was looking for the uh, Tesseract. Oh, yeah, so he was. He was in that. He was. Um, oh, he was scheduled to be an adventure in space and time as the third Doctor, but it never happened. Mm. No, but uh, we should have something instead of the second one. Yeah, that didn't work so well. <laughs> it didn't work for me anyway. No, he was too happy. It was too much like Pam Doom when he came in. Hello. It just didn't sound like him. No. That's, um, so if they ever get set uh, two in, then, then they're going to have to get somebody else because he wasn't very good. Um, but obviously David Bradley was in that, and obviously he was in, in, in this as well. So, I mean, what did you think overall? Is there anything that sort of stood out to you in, in the whole shebang? Yeah, they could have told the uh, sexist comments down, because it was just... David Bradley, as much as he's a brilliant actor, it was just uh, an actor playing an actor who's playing a part, rather than him actually taking on the role of the first Doctor and making it his own. He's too busy... He never did really deviate from the script, really. He just stuck to it. Yeah, this is what I'm going to say. This is what I have to say, so I'll just say it. See, I've got a different take on it. Because I've, I've heard a lot of people saying that I oh, was too sexist, he was too grumpy, he was too this, he was too that. And to what I'd say to that is, as fans, we've got to realise that most people neither know nor care yeah. about things like the, the nuances of William Hartnell's portrayal in the third season he did. Mm-hmm. Uh, so while we know that he became less grumpy and whatever uh, during his time, most people won't know that. Mm-hmm. So he's, he's kind of like he was a cipher. Yeah, the grumpiness didn't really bother me. It was... I don't think he was that grumpy anyway. No, it was just... I think they tried to cram too much in. They were trying to show the differences between uh, both eras. Oh, absolutely. Um, and to do that, sadly, he had to turn the first Doctor into the stereotype of the first Doctor. Yeah. Always grumpy, he's sexy. He's from the 60s. And I think they had to sort of ramp it up a bit to make it plain mm-hmm. that he's from a different time, that the Doctor's from a different time then as well. I, I don't know. I could be wrong. Yeah. But that, to, to me, look, at least he wasn't Richard Herndl. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> he wasn't the... A complete character. Yeah. But what <laughs> I did Matt like was, uh, what, I'm going to be you? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, am I really going to be flying around space and time fixing everything? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I expected to be younger. I am younger! <laughs> <laughs> I did also, like, um, Moffat does this brilliant thing where he tries to explain a way why an actor why a character will look different if a certain actor plays him, or why actors look older. So obviously when 10 met 5, he said, oh, it's because we're both in the same place, there's this weird time thing goes on, makes you look a bit older and fatter. 
<laughs> Whereas this time he said, "All oh, right, it's because you're neither you're neither the second nor the first, so you look a bit different, mm-hmm. uh, and that's why you look like David Bradley and not William Hartnell." Yeah, which I thought was great. At least uh, we're gonna we're not gonna get that anymore. We're not gonna get Chibnall won't explain. I don't think no. as much, and he won't go into it as much as Moffat, which I'm gonna miss. Um, I do, I do feel with Chipper we're going to go to, um, the, the days of Russell T. Davis. It's going to be much more, I don't want to say the word superficial, but that's what I mean. Um, we're not going to get as many intricate weird plots, which some people think is great. I, I don't particularly think it is, but there you go. Um, as you said, Moffat's writing. He doesn't, write, that's, he, that's what I love about Moffat's writing. He doesn't write, uh, sci-fi, he writes fairy tales. Yeah. It's, but I mean, at the end of the day, as, as Doctor Who fans of, of long standing, we know full well that with different producers, different writers, you're going to get different things. The Hinchcliffe years were not the Williams years, were not the Barry Letts and Bowie, uh, Letts and, uh, Terwin Dix years. Um, I was, listening, I was actually watching something with Terry Dix on earlier on. I'm going to be so upset when he eventually leaves us because uh, he's great. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying, saying to Barry, Bowie the other day. Um, but yeah, um, but yeah, th- those, you've got distinct eras of Doctor Who, and this is just, you've got to get it again. You've got the RTD soapy era, you've got the Moffat, as you say, fairy tale era, and now we're going to get something different. The best thing is, we don't know what it's going to be like. Yeah. Um, although some people have said maybe she's going to be stuck on Earth. Why would she be? Talis is. Well, we'll go into that. <laughs> As you said, I've written down here, no enemies. Um, the setup for the glass avatars were baddies, but essentially they were only there to help the Doctor decide whether he's going to stay or go. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is good. I, I kind of like the fact that this was all about him rather than saving the universe. Yeah, saving himself. Yeah, but as you, I think you said to me earlier on, he, he, you know, he's that paranoid and cynical that he thought there was an enemy. Yeah, you just can't help seeing him he? everywhere he goes. I mean, well, it's five doctors, goes to a nice picnic, ends up getting embroiled in a plot in Gallifrey. <laughs> I blame Silla. But then I blame Silla for most things, so. I? It's always Silla. I like Silla, but it's always his fault. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they always stick him in the TARDIS. <laughs> Stay there. Um, but nice to see Bill again. Uh, it shows how far that 12 came from his grumpy beginnings. Yeah. Um, so it's very much like the first Doctor. Mm-hmm. Because obviously he started out all grumpy old man. Mm-hmm. Bit of a twat, really. I mean, if you watch 10,000 BC, he's quite happy to kill someone. Oh, so... yeah, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Said, it's just for kids. He's <laughs> <laughs> just going to steal someone's head in just so we can get away. <laughs> And it was Chatterton that stopped them. <laughs> I, um, Beth from the Time Ladies has been watching a lot of First Doctor stuff and she kind of fallen in love with Ian. And I say it's quite easily done. Ian's a great character. Oh, yeah. Um, especially in the early ones where it's just like saying, you can't like go around killing people, Doctor. Why not? Why not, Chatterton? <laughs> <laughs> um, what we put? Rusty. Um, he's come full circle with Rusty because Twelve's not the same man that he was, but Rusty is the man he could have been. Yeah. Uh, so he's sort of full of hate for the Daleks and, and still doing what he's doing even after like, because I think, was it set at the end of the universe basically? More or less, yes. Because I thought originally it was going to be me that they saw. Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of thought, I the Dalek this time around. <laughs> but the godly thing is, somebody was saying on Twitter the other day, oh, I hope there's no Daleks in the new series. There's always going to be Daleks. Yep. Because they have to. Yeah. Otherwise, Terry Nation and State will just say, nope, not using them no more. Mm-hmm. And you just can't, can't do it. Personally, I think that's a douche canoe move, but there you go. Um, something else I was going to say, then I can't remember. Um, I mean, what did you think about Rusty being included? Did you think he was needed, or do you think he was just being frivolous? Or? Mm, a bit of both. Well, Daleks tend, tend, tend to know everything that's going on in the universe at any given point, but uh, mm. they choose to ignore most of it just to concentrate on doing what they want to do. Mm. We'll get around to that bit later. I think it's interesting that you've had um, sort of the last regeneration, you had the Cybermen involved, and this regeneration, you've got the Daleks involved. 
Um, probably because you've had Sarah Mill in the last story, but there you go. Um, so about the first Doctor, as we said, he was a ciphered character. He wasn't. It wasn't a nuanced performance. It, it couldn't be. Uh, although with Big Finish, you do get that. Yeah. Um, so I, th- I think it's sort of that if you're a fan and you do want that performance, go listen to, to do Big Finish dramas because you've you've heard those, haven't you? Yeah, I've, I've heard the first one uh, about a couple of weeks ago. I haven't gotten around to listening to the rest yet. Second one's really good. The Great White Hurricane one. Um, it's, yeah, brilliant. But the Desti- Destination Wars, doesn't it? Mm. Um, with James Dreyfus as the master. Yes. Who's really good. Yes. I, I was quite should... shocked, actually. Yeah, I think they should get him in as the master in uh, actual scenes. <laughs> that would be great. Have him as the, the, the first master as well. Mm-hmm. That would yeah, be great. Would, uh, the latest Doctor was the first master. Yeah. That would be yeah. I'd, I'd be completely down. Because he's sort of a mix of Ainley and Delgado. There's a lot of Delgado in that performance. Yeah. And I am always a fan of people wanting to be like Delgado. Because <laughs> <laughs> even though, you know what, someone was asking the other day, they did that whole long list. Did you see that I posted that whole long list of questions and answers about Doctor Who? Oh, no, I've just we'll have to have a look into it. I might see if I can drag it up in a minute and, and go through it bit, bit by bit. But um, one of the questions is that, who's your favourite master? And it's like, as much as I love Missy, and I do, because I love Michelle Gomez, and she was brilliant as Missy, Delgado's still my favourite. Because mm-hmm. he's just, I don't know. I don't know why. He's just got it straight away. Mm-hmm. And everyone else has been either trying to copy him or trying desperately not to be him. Yeah, like uh, Johnson tried desperately not to be him. But he was, he was brilliant in his own way. I was thinking that the other day. I was talking to my friend Shane about it and was saying, as much as Missy was great, Sim was brilliant because he just didn't give a shit about anyone. <laughs> he was just horribly, no redeeming features. Exactly the opposite to what Missy was doing. Yeah. And I kind of feel we need that again in the next master. Mm-hmm. And we need him to be a bit of a chauvinist as well. I think I think what we need from the next master, number one needs to be male. Number two needs to say, I was a girl once, it was shit. <laughs> I hated it. I lost my edge. And now, Doctor, I'm going to come for you because I reckon you've lost your edge. And that's why you're a girl now. Something like that. Something really utterly horrible. Yeah, that is horrible. But, um, yeah. But, uh, just, just... Know. Missy was really, really bloody ruthless anyway. She was to begin with. And then she, because she spent time with the Doctor and because... But even being ruthless, her whole raison d'etre was to get the Doctor back on her side again. Mm-hmm. Which, ironically, is what Delgado's master tried to do a lot. Yeah. The whole point was, let's try and get the Doctor's attention. Because I was uh, listening to the Sea Devils. And I've been listening to some of the reconstructed soundtracks. And, and one of them was the Sea Devils. And you got the whole one, they're sword fighting. He's basically saying to the Doctor, come on, you're better than this. You could join me. We could rule the universe together. Uh, and that's nine, nine times out of ten, he was trying to get the Doctor to do that. Mm-hmm. But uh, anyway, yeah, I'm w- going well for. But yeah, um, if you want to bring James Dreyfus on on the show as the Master, that's great. <laughs> Plus the fact that you know, I like James Dreyfus a lot. I like it, even things like Constable Goody and Gimme 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 and that. Yeah. But I always felt there was something else there. Mm-hmm. And I was actually talking again to Shane, my friend, the other day, and said. Um, somebody would make a really good master, and you won't think about it, but he has been in one of the big finishes, Matthew Kelly. Oh, yes, Matthew Kelly. Because he started as a serial killer. Mm-hmm. When he'd done Stars in the Rise, everybody saw, oh, Matthew Kelly, he's going to be in this drama, he's going to be shit. And then he blew everyone away yes, with how evil he was. Someone <coughs> like that. Or maybe it's just Bradley. I don't know. Bradley B. Bradley was the master. <laughs> <laughs> but never mind. Um, do, 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 do. Oh yeah, the other thing about David Bradley is a really good chemistry with Capaldi. Yes, that was brilliant. They suited each other very, very well. Um, I did also like the line about if I hear language like that again, you'll get a jolly good smack <laughs> bottom. <laughs> You're an ass. Which is like kind of shocks. I don't think we're going to get as much swears in the next sort of that set of Doctor Who's. Yeah, and that's very much a Moffat thing. Is that? Um, cause we have him saying uh, squeaky bum time and bloody and all kinds of things, but, uh, interesting though, the doctor never says it. It's always these complaints. It's always like Bill swears at him. Yeah, I think that, that 
it kind of reminded me of Harry Potter, you know, where Ron's always square. <laughs> <laughs> Blood, bloody hell. Yeah, exactly. But it was nice to see Bill again. Mm-hmm. Um, we're never going to see her ever again. <laughs> Did you think of Clara? Uh, who thought for a minute she wasn't going to be in it? <laughs> me. Why? What made you think that she weren't going to see her? Uh, because she'd already had her ending. Not her ending, though, is it? It's his ending. And what do they always do without going doctors? Show you all the companions they had. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then he brought Amy back. Brought Amy back. Um, That's the Rose difference. Tyler. Yeah, that was the difference, though. When they brought Amy back, that was, uh, there was only a ninja dancing around the room. But when they brought Clara back, it was the... Oh. Really? Oh, I, I like I, Clara, but I don't... I like that, but I just... Didn't see anything for her, but Amy Pond's my companion all the way. Yeah, and the, the, I mean, looking on Twitter and stuff, and, and looking at the reaction videos, there are a lot of people. I mean, the word diverse reaction, some people say, oh, she's back again. And then the worst people sort of really crying their eyes out that Clara had come back. Mm-hmm. I did like what she said. She said, hello again, you stupid old man. Because <laughs> 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 that's the relationship they had. Yeah. Um, it wasn't, again, it wasn't her reaction mm-hmm. that made me a, a bit teary eyed. It was him. It was him remembering her again and he smiled. Yeah. And when Capaldi smiles, mm-hmm. that makes me upset because he doesn't smile ever. Um, so it was really nice to see him remember Clara again because mm-hmm. he loved Clara. And he, you know, when you think, because I was watching, um, sorry, I've got a Doctor Who death calendar at work and I ripped it off and Clara was there and he said, oh, 11th Doctor. And I thought, well, that's weird because yes, she is kind of, she's an 11th Doctor companion, really. Yeah. But I never think of her as being with 11. I always think of her as, as 12's companion. Mm-hmm. I think that they made it, their, their relationship their own. Mm-hmm. And yeah, well, I agree. Maybe it wasn't the same as Pond, mm-hmm. but it was still close. Yeah. You'll never get Pond again, like. Never get a pond relationship again. That was just... no. You're never going to get that. I don't think you're going to get that with thirteen either, mm-hmm. um, because they're going for very much um, season nineteen, uh, sort of Davison's first year. Yeah, and they're going to find really quickly that there's too many companions there, and I think by the end of that series, you're going to lose one or more of them. How many is that, Bradley Walsh? Um... Three. Um, there's Bradley Mandip and the other guy, who I forget. Um, mm-hmm. But there's yeah, the, the 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 lad, the girl, and Bradley Walsh. Oh, I reckon Bradley's probably going to go at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to get the two. I think they go. I get a sort of Sarah Jane Adventures feel from the other two. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think they are trying to skew the show younger. Which is fine, it's, you know, I have no problem with that. Um, but yeah, it, it's difficult, especially in the first season, it's, it's sometimes difficult, unless there's a remaining companion, to get that relationship closeness. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Um, the captain then, uh, we called it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we called it pretty much straight away, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, he's, it, it wasn't even the way he looked, it was just the fact that Gatiss was playing him. He's going to make himself a goddamn Lethbridge Stewart, isn't he? <laughs> because he loves the Brigadier. Who doesn't? Um, the other, uh, he's a Brigadier is now, technically, he's his great uncle. Mm-hmm. But they've, uh, in, in previous fiction, Hamish, because Archibald Hamish has been in previous fiction. Mm-hmm. And he was his grandfather. So what they've said, and it isn't an official explanation, but it is like a reconciled um, explanation. He is his great uncle. He's also his granddad because he's his father's brother who had it away with his grandmother. Ah. So it is Alistair. He is a direct descendant of Alistair. Mm-hmm. Or a direct ancestor, sorry, of Alistair. Mm-hmm. But it's his great uncle and his grandfather at the same time. But he's still a less British Stuart. But I, I must admit, there were a few onions dancing around when he said, uh, you can trust me. So you can trust me. He, he will visit your family quite often. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, you can't put anything in there with the brigadier and not expect me to well up. I know. 
because I, I still can't watch where he salutes him. <laughs> I can't watch that when he's a Cyberman. I still love the fact that he's out there somewhere, being a Cyberman and saving the universe. Because I bet that's exactly what he did. Oh, yes. Finally realised should... that everything the Doctor was telling him was true. Because <laughs> <laughs> he never quite believed him. No. Chap over there with wings. Five round <laughs> record. <laughs> Chap yeah. over there. Yeah, when we come to do the third Doctor, that's the first story on the uh, list because that is my absolute favourite of the third Doctor. The Demons. The Demons, yeah. I was listening the other day to um, TV Cream. When it was the 50th, they did a, a rundown of the top 50 Doctor Who moments. Now, it wasn't like top 50 moments like you'd expect. It was top 50 what they considered to be good things about Doctor Who. And one of them was the master's speech in, in The Demons. Mm-hmm. And they were saying, it's so mundane, the stuff that he's talking about. It's not overarching universal problems. It's these people in the village, they all have little dirty secrets that the master uses to get them on his side. Oh, yeah. But it's, you know, oh, you've been nicking Christmas club money. Or you've been nicking this. And the same, the, one of the great things about Delgado is he, he could make that sound really important. Mm-hmm. So you always find this in the villages, little villages anyway. There's always a dirty, seedy underbelly. Mm. Like that, yeah. Oh, exactly. But they did it. They did the same speech in the Dalek voice to say to just show that it wouldn't have worked if you'd had any other villain but the Master. Yeah. You know. So uh, had your wife come home from her sister's yet? <laughs> yeah, and it's <laughs> and then they played the whole Delgado thing and said, "Look, this, this guy is just he's brilliant." <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, it was, it was Brigadier's ace, but we will definitely talk a lot next week, uh, next time about the demons because it is awesome. Um, uh, Gatiss has always did this thing that he's really good at sympathetic roles. He can play the most grotesque characters possible mm-hmm. and yet play the most sympathetic role ever as well. And it's that bit where he says, What do you mean the first world war? Oh, dear. And it's like, oh no, that's so upset. And he looks so upset about it as well. Yeah. Um, and it's just, <laughs> when he's going around the town, he's picking out videotapes and saying, oh, this is brilliant. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's fucking awesome. I love him. I mean, he didn't have much to do. And he was there basically just to be a brigadier, uh, to be Lethbridge Stewart, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. I'm, I'm good with it. I know a lot of people were really angry. It's like, again, how can you be angry? I know uh, people are weird. They seem not to like the show. <laughs> Star Wars fans, Star Wars fans hate Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, how dare you put a reference to a beloved character in this show? <laughs> <laughs> Next, you'll be bringing back Kate. Oh, for fuck's sake! Kate's brilliant. Ah, oh, she's there. Have you ever listened to any of the unit audio stuff from Big Finish? No, not yet. I really, Great. really need to catch up on the Big. I've got plenty of time now. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's it's brilliant. Uh, she's really good in it, and um, so is um, um, uh, Ingrid Oliver because mm-hmm. she's back as Osgood, and it's like I can't have enough Osgood. Oh no, I wish I really, really wish she'd gone with the Doctor when he yes. when he said to her uh, uh, all of space and time, and she went yes. I was going oh come on, um, Missy killed her. Uh, <laughs> well, she killed killed one of them. Yeah, one of them. Um, I mean, Chibnall wrote Power of Three, which is where you got Unit back in its proper form. Because obviously they'd been back before with the RTD era, but he was never, never convinced me as Unit. Mm-hmm. Uh, until Kate came, and Kate and Osgood came into it. Um, so because Chibnall wrote that, I have hope that they'll be back. I hope they'll be back. Um, the other good thing about the Unit audio stuff is that, uh, Ramon Tickerham's in it as well. Um, Tinny to Tickerham, but he was in This Life. Yeah. And he was in Man Down as well. He's a very funny man, but he plays this, um, he kind of plays the Brigadier, but he kind of a link to the past. He knew the Brigadier, worked with the Brigadier. And he's got this great voice. Uh, it's kind of like Matt Berry and a combination of Matt Berry and Nicholas Courtney. So he's like, he plays that kind of character. So it's awesome. He's tweeting Matt Berry's voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's so much uh, funnier. Oh, absolutely. Um, but yeah, uh, the unit stuff's really good. So, um, it, it, it's always good to have unit in there. But, um, and, and again, Lethbridge Stewart, 
it, I thought it was nice to have a Lethbridge Stewart in there. I thought it was nice to have this little link to the past. Also, uh, when he's in the trench, you know the German soldier? Yeah. Do you know who played that? No, go on. That's Toby Whitehouse. Who wrote things like School Reunion. Oh! Um, and lots of other Doctor Who stuff and created Being Human and things like that. Um, but Moffat got in there and said, do you want to play a German soldier? Do you speak German? And, and no one will really know who you are. I said, yeah, absolutely. There you go. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so that's, again, really, really good. And then we come to the regeneration. No. A lot of people saying it wasn't as emotional as the other two. And no. I kind of agree with that. I think it was. I think it's because he was good with it. Mm-hmm. Although the line that did get me is that he said, oh, one more life won't kill anyone. Well, me. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's kind of tragic because, yeah, they, they do say that. A lot. I mean, Ten had that as well, didn't he? You know, I don't want to. Oh, right, I'll go on living, but it won't be me. Yeah. Whereas Eleven was kind of good with it. Yeah. Um, and obviously, tw- but he did the speech. Yeah. Never be. I've got it here, right in my hand. Never be cruel. Never be cowardly. Hate is always foolish and love is always wise. Always try to be nice, but never fail to be kind. Laugh hard, run fast, be kind. Doctor, I let you go. I'm going to miss his speech. Yeah, he's got such a His speeches. Yeah. It's his voice, he's got such a wonderful voice and, the ex- and his face is so expressive when he's pouring all the emotion into the words. Yeah, I think we've we've lost a damn good doctor. Yeah. Uh, I don't think... I think he would be appreciated a lot more now he's gone. Mm-hmm. Um, that's nothing against Jodie Whittaker, because I'm sure she'll play it brilliantly. Play, I'm, I always sit Tom Baker line. Nobody's ever failed playing the doctor. Mm-hmm. Writers have failed them. Producers may have failed them. They've never failed. Mm-hmm. And it's it's going to be a case of Capaldi's this brilliant actor who maybe wasn't appreciated at the time. Who will, he's like Tennant with me. I never appreciated Tennant at the time. I'm going to admit, when he went, I was kind of glad. But now I look back at some of his stuff. I'm God for that. <laughs> oh, I was, I think I was just, I, I kind of done with him. Not so much him as much as Russell T. Davis. Yeah. I was done with him. And I kind of hope that Chibnall doesn't think, oh, it'd be great to go back to those days, because he wouldn't. In those two stories, his finale, they were an absolute bloody mess, in my opinion. I was like sitting there waiting for them to begin. And the last time I felt like that, waiting for something to begin, was when I stupidly went to see the Matt LeBlanc lost in space. Oh, yeah, I agree. Now, when's this film going to start? <laughs> I think, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a sort of a tale of two halves is the end of time, because the stuff with Bernard Cribbins is great. Yeah. Uh, the stuff where they're just two old men talking mm. is bloody great, and it's a shame... Just bring him back for one more go around, Wilfred. I, I realise that story's kind of done now. Yeah. But I would like to see Wilf one last time. Yeah. Um, but that's clearly not going to happen. But, uh, yeah, I, I, know, I know what you mean about the story not starting. Is the, the David Harewood stuff. Had it been done again, I think they... they maybe it shouldn't have been a two-parter. Yeah. But then that was more the BBC than Russell T. Davis. They wanted to make a massive thing of it, didn't they, that Christmas? Um, and because like sort of Tennant was like he was on like two hundred programs or something stupid <laughs> like that over Christmas. It was ridiculous. I know. Um, and the ident was Doctor Who based and everything. It was great, but yeah, get on with it. Um, maybe maybe they should have made it a film length, like a feature length thing rather than two parts. But anyway, um, so yeah, the the whole Capaldi speech thing I'm gonna miss because the Zygon speech is one of the best things ever. Uh, from the Zygon inversion. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a shame that he's gone. And obviously you could see a lot of Moffat's words in there as well. That's, the whole speech is Moffat's philosophy on who the Doctor is. Mm-hmm. Um, that whole thing about being kind, that comes straight from uh, the Beast Below. Mm-hmm. You've got this alien who's very old and very kind. Yeah. And the Doctor should always be kind. And never cruel or cowardly and all that kind of stuff. It was, it was a fantastic speech. Um, and then he changed and destroyed the TARDIS yet again. <laughs> <laughs> um, more money for the BBC Enterprises has been getting the TARDIS uh, interior y- for a set. Yes. Um, Not as a fact, which, two of them. <laughs> 
I hope they release what that's going to look like sooner rather than later, because otherwise you're just giving loads of ammunition to say, oh, it's going to be pink. Oh, God. Just make it pure white with wrangles and a central column. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you're going back to basics, which apparently they are, mm-hmm. that the whole, they're doing what they, you know, JNT did with Davison all those years ago. We're going back to basics. It's going back to, back to what it should be, blah, blah. Um, and then you see our clothes, which are absolutely bloody awesome and, uh, the kind of, uh, what, a uh, an alien would think a woman would wear. Oh, absolutely. Well, the, the T-shirt is one that uh, Liz Sladen wore. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's based on one Liz Sladen wore years ago. Yeah. Um, obviously, the middle bit's a bit different, but the middle bit's obviously for scarf, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I think so, anyway. I like to think it is. The braces and the, the trousers are a combination of 2 and 11. And it, it's a combination of all his bits. Mm-hmm. Um, but like you say, it's, it's a, an, a, an alien's idea of what a woman dress is like. <laughs> Aliens I do what human dresses like me really, really, yeah. <laughs> Well yeah. I like her outfit. I think mean, it was great. Mm-hmm. Um I like the fact that there's always ge- that sorry, that always there's uh, already gender swapping going on with it as well. Oh yeah, they were brilliant. <laughs> there's loads of lads wearing it. It's <laughs> like you can go away with it. Somebody said, Oh you should totally wear that. It's like not a fucking chance. <laughs> How ridiculous would I look wearing that? No way. Well, not because the girls' clothes, it's because I'm old and fat. Uh, if you're a thin 20 year old sort of fresh faced young boy, yes, you'd probably get away with that, but no way would I do it, old fat baby man. Kind of reminds me a tiny little bit of Rainbow as well. A little bit of that, a little bit of Mark from Mark. Yes. <laughs> um, which is uh, again great. She's got the Bajoran ear cuff from DS9 going on as well. Yeah. Um, I'm not, oddly enough, I'm not sure how to feel about the earring. Which is weird, isn't it? Probably Amy wore earrings. So did Clara. So did Bill. I know I wear both of them. It's just it's just, the doctor wearing an earring. It's just I don't know. It's just a bit weird for me. But there you go. Um, that's that, that and the Northern accent. The two weirdest things for me. Other than that, I could care less. Oh, um, Geordie Doctor next. <laughs> who's that? Geordie Doctor next. Oh God, no! Fucking that would be Millican as the doctor, wouldn't it? Oh no. <laughs> Oh, I'd get something wrong with me, could like. Um, no, don't. Oh, but you. Yeah. Uh, but there you go. Um, no, it's, I mean, her, the first two seconds, it, it's too soon to tell. There's lots of people saying, oh, she's going to be shit, oh, she's going to be brilliant. It's like, well, she only said two words and fell out of the TARDIS. And they didn't get back the same, like, not like they did with the 11. Yeah, whereas well, 11 said loads of stuff. The 12 was just uh, kicked me. That gave no, nothing I... away as to what he's going to be. No. I don't think we're going to get any post regeneration stressy stuff with her. Mm-hmm. Which is good, because I can't fucking bear it. <laughs> I can't bear it. It just winds me up so much. I was watching Robot the, the, the other day, uh, yesterday in fact, and it's like, he's just, he's fully formed straight away. Yeah, he's still mental. Did you not see the clothes he was trying to wear? <laughs> he's, that's, that's just the fourth doctor. <laughs> that's not. It's just seen where that anyway, he didn't care. Um, he just got more morose as the years went by that, so it's still batshit mental. Um, but that whole thing in Castrovalva, where I don't mind it in Castrovalva, mm-hmm. but then they try to make it a thing. Mm-hmm. The doctor regenerates, he has trouble, it's like, eh, not really. When he was, uh, when he turned into the sixth as well, when he tried to murder his companion there. Bloody well, that's because, that's because it's Perry, don't, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want to try to murder her numerous times anyway. That was always a mistake. We'll get onto that when we get to six, but I always thought Perry making her American was a mistake. Again, that was just blatantly, let's sell this to America. Yeah. If you're going to do that, get an American person to play it. Well, they Not thought some... she was really American. Yeah, no. I don't know how they could have thought that. <laughs> she clearly wasn't. Um, but anyway. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, she says, oh, brilliant. <laughs> and then as soon as she presses a button, and I think this is important, and I'll tell you why in a second. She presses a button, the TARDIS basically kicks her out. Mm-hmm. I think, because a lot of people have said, oh, she fell out, or the TARDIS was broken because she regenerated. I, I think the TARDIS, if you watch it, and I've watched it a few times, the TARDIS actually shakes her out. Yeah. And I think, oh, sorry, go on. I was just about to say that, 
the TARDIS tried to do that when uh, he left around 10 he generally it didn't do 11 I'm not sure I'm not sure I'll have to go back and watch it I thought that it just it didn't throw him out it was just crashing mm-hmm. this time it seemed to specifically throw her out and then dematerialise yeah I think I'm sorry go on I'll have to go back and look at that I, well, I've gone back a few times. It does look like it sort of shakes. It turns on its side and then it shakes a little bit as if it's trying to get rid of it. I, again, I could be completely wrong, but I was thinking the reason it did that maybe was because it set, it's got isomorphic control. We know this. Mm-hmm. It's set up default for her to be a man. Yeah. So when she presses that button, it thinks, who the fuck's this? <laughs> Kicks her out and then emerges, um, does an emergency dematerialization. Yeah, but when Amy first goes into the TARDIS and fiddles around, uh, oh yeah, she does, his TARDIS, uh, boots a bit and shakes around a bit when Amy touches it at first. Yeah, and he always had a go at Clara as well. Mm. Oh yeah. He never liked Clara. No. And I think the thing, obviously companions go in the TARDIS all the time, but I think because it happened when she touched the console. Mm-hmm. Because the TARDIS is set up for the Doctor to be a bloke, as soon as he isn't, he's thinking, who the hell's this? Of course, the other character that was recently a bloke, uh, recently a girl, Missy. Mm-hmm. So that's the only thing I can think of. But I could be wrong. Obviously, I'm probably wrong, but... Yeah, the other he thing... flew the TARDIS uh, before. Hmm. I, I don't know. I could be wrong. That could be the explanation. Or it could be just pissed off that it, the Doctor's wrecked it. Again. Again. But it's only done it twice, to be fair. Um, cause 11 didn't happen. It happened with 10. Mm-hmm. Might have happened with 9 a little bit as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I tell you what I have noticed. It's very easy for me to say she as the doctor name. Mm-hmm. I found that really easy to say. Yeah, it's not really that big a thing. Mm-hmm. No, the doctor, she does this. Um, but yeah, we, we leave the doctor. With the TARDIS having dematerialised and her falling through space. And that, apparently, the rumour has come out, is that she will now spend the rest of the season stuck on Earth. I've heard rumours about that before, but they were going to do that with 10 as well. But they never did. I can't say it. I can't say it. And then it'd be rumours that there was going to be an entire series with no Doctor and uh, it was uh, going to be Rose looking for him. No, it, that shit doesn't work. It maybe works for a, an episode. No. Um, a lot of people conjecturing on what it's going to be called, The Girl Who Fell From The Sky, mm-hmm. as the first episode. Possibly. Although, can we stop calling her a girl? She's 35. <laughs> <laughs> she's, not, she's, not, she's not a girl, is she? She's a woman. Um, I also kind of hope that they... Don't make it a big thing of saying, oh, well, you're a woman. Because it doesn't matter, does it? That'll piss me off. I'm the doctor, right? Oh, but you're a woman. Oh, you can't do this, you're a woman. Oh, let's not do that, shall we, lads? <laughs> it wouldn't. It doesn't matter to the doctor. Why would it matter to anyone else? Get, get enough of that over the lines. Because <laughs> that's, that's going to be the best thing, when the doctor just sort of doesn't give a shit. Because, mm. I mean, the doctor can go, oh, I'm a girl, I'm a girl, oh, no, oh, oh. Just went, oh, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> this would be interesting. I have not been a girl for a long time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I can't, I can't wait for the next season. Yeah. Autumn, yeah. we've got to wait. That's a long ass time to wait, isn't it? September, isn't it? Or August? They reckon August, yeah, possibly August, September. I would say August Bank Holiday is probably a good idea. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a feature length, apparently. Good. Uh, the first one. And uh, the other thing I've heard is it might be set in Sheffield. <laughs> for some reason. I don't know. I don't know. It might be. Uh, whatever. I'm sure. It, I think Chibnall's right in the first one, as far as I'm aware. Bradley Walsh is a northerner as well, isn't he? Uh, Liverpool. Yeah, he's a scouser. There's Chibbers. Oh, Bradley Walsh? Yeah. He's a Londoner, isn't he? Thought he was in Northern for some reason. No, he's a bloody Charlton boy, I think. <laughs> he's about as London as it gets, I think. Um, I, because you said you're not too sure about Bradley. No, I'm not. So I've been watching uh, 
one of these game shows when I was uh, living in the Dobbs. Mm. And uh, I'm like, mm -hmm. Have you ever seen him in Law and Order UK? No, didn't watch it. Do that. Because that was... Harry. Uh, do, do, do that if you can. Mm -hmm. Uh, cause Chibnall wrote it. Mm -hmm. That's, that's why basically he's got the power with, yeah. on Doctor Who, cause Chibnall knows him really well. <laughs> and they're quite good mates. Um. That's why Jodie Whittaker is the Doctor as well, because, uh, Broadchurch. Yes. Um, interesting enough, Davison was on Don Order UK as well. Was he? Yeah, he was, he played, um, lawyer, I think. Cause Bradley Walsh was the, um, oh, what's his bloody name? The guy who played Lumiere, uh, that character anyway, uh, the old guy, the older guy in Law and Order. Mm -hmm. That that was who Bradley Walsh was supposed to be, the sort of veteran, older cop. Um, and he was really good in it, to be fair. And he did start off as an actor. Um, so I, 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 I'm prepared to give him more than a chance. And apparently Jodie Whittaker really gets on with him, so that's, that's good. Yeah. Uh, that's always a good thing to say. But yeah, they've already started filming. Apparently, she has been seen. Yeah, I've seen a lot of pictures. Uh, I've seen the ones from the first episode where she's uh, wandering around in twelve clothes. She, it's a shame she's not keeping them because she looks really good in those clothes. Yeah, she looks really good in the outfit that she had on for the uh, announcement of uh, the new Doctor. Oh, the hoodie in there. Mm. Yeah. Um, no, I thought she looked really good in 12 clothes, but I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the outfit she's wearing. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's a shame she's ditching, ditching them, but there you go. Um, and she won an award, the, uh, best television moment on the NTAs of the night, the National Television Awards. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> pointless. <laughs> <laughs> a pointless award that was. Hey, here's your participation award. <laughs> but never mind. Um, yeah, there's a lot to look forward to. I think in, 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 in Jodie Whittaker's reign, but it, it look, nerds, yeah. it, it's happened now. A lot of people are hoping it fails so they can point the finger and say it all to so. Why would you want that to fail? It doesn't make sense. No idea. Um, they're also raging this week. She's getting paid the same as Capaldi was. Good. Have you heard how much she's getting? How much? Two hundred to two hundred and forty nine thousand pounds an episode. Really? Good. Yeah. And it's anywhere between that amount is is what she gets paid. It's variable uh, depending on how much they're in it. Apparently, so if they're in it, pretty much all the episodes they get paid the upper limit of two hundred and forty nine grand an episode. Bloody hell! That's a lot. I was of the opinion that she might, she should get paid a little bit more because she's under a lot of pressure. She's got to make this shit work. Yeah. It's all right if you're a bloke, because, oh, well, he failed as the Doctor. Oh, well, never mind. Ah, oh, she failed as the Doctor, ruined the whole show, blah, blah, blah. And to be fair, I'm, I'm sure they wouldn't do this, but Chibnall and that lot have got basically plausible deniability. Yeah. Well, it wasn't our fault. It was the fact that it was a female Doctor. <laughs> oh, no. I, I can't see Chris Chibnall doing that. Ever. It, was his, it was his choice, so yeah, at the end of the day. He's made a big thing about it being his choice, so I don't think he would do that. I would hope he wouldn't do that, but... Oh, there's, I was... There's a guy on Twitter, and it was a guy arguing with another guy, and I just got... He's basically saying that he hated not only the, fe the idea of a female god, but he hated most of the companions as well, because any companion who gets bigger than the show... So he didn't like Rose, he didn't like Clara... Because any companion gets bigger than the show, that's just too big for their boots, bloody women. Um, so I said basically, and he was giving all the usual arguments of like the Doctor's the main focus of the show, which has never been the case. Mm -hmm. Watch the early shows. The show was about Susan, Barbara, and Ian when it first started, really. Uh, oh, Doctor's a secondary character in his own show, and all this, the usual crap that they come out with. Uh -huh. And I said, oh, so basically, your argument boils down to girl smell you. <laughs> and he just had a go at me saying, and it, it was the ramblings of a madman, basically. Moffat likes trolling the fans. So we'll ask, what's that got to do with anything? Moffat doesn't work on the show anymore. Oh, but he likes trolling the fans though, doesn't he? So, well, no, I don't think he does. Oh, here's an interview from 1995 where he said the show was shit and it had shit moments in it. 
And I said, well... Well, he was right. He does. <laughs> you're, not, you're not watching the Horns of Nemo and saying you're enjoying it because it's good, right? <laughs> you're watching it because it's shit and you just go, look at the special effects. I watch it for Graham Crowd and going off on one. It's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I don't, some of them are truly brilliant, right? Brain of Morbius is still scary. And I pop, put up on the, the website page the other day um, one of the cliffhangers on it, where Sarah's blind and, and Morbius is shouting at her. That's terrifying. Yeah. Even now, that's terrifying. But I watch City of Death, and Skaros takes off his mask, something that terrified me when I was three. And look at it now and think, the fuck, you can even see the guy's face underneath. <laughs> that's not scary at all. It's like, hi, oh, it's brilliant, though. It's, it's, it's like Shakespeare and shit. It's like, no, no, it's not. Stop. What? <laughs> It's not the greatest show on earth because it's good. It's the greatest show on earth because it's enjoyable. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, it, it's one of these things where sometimes it can be the best show on earth and then other times it can be just awful, but still entertaining. But he was coming, oh, and what did he say? You're a self-hating fan. I said, I don't know what that is. <laughs> you're either fan or you're not a fan. He's a self-hating fan. Well, he's, well he doesn't really like the show, really. Because he doesn't like the sum of it, doesn't like the uh, sum of it. See, no, I don't agree with that. I don't think there is such a thing as a self-hating fan. If you're taking that attitude, you're not a fan. You just, you think it's something else, and you just, they're not making a show the way I want it to be made, therefore I'm going to say that they hate the show, or they don't understand the show, or, but that isn't what a fan does. Used to get a lot of that years ago on Life Journal when uh, Rose left and Martha came along. Mm. Oh God, you've got so many little girls just hate watching it. Well, we said earlier on you had Chris Chibnall on open air set slagging the show off when JNT was producing. So it's not a new thing. Mm. It's it's oh they're not making the show like it used to be made. <laughs> oh, they're ch- changing things. What a show about change! Yeah, things have to change to move on. I'm sure there were people in 1966 saying, oh, fucking Patrick Chowton, who's he? <laughs> I'm never watching again. Well, go on then. So I basically said to him in the end, fair enough. Look, mate, I get it. You don't like the fact that there's a female doctor. Brilliant. You, you've noted. So you, you've said your piece. I've noted it. Don't watch the show anymore, if that's your attitude. But stop going on about it. Because nobody cares. Plus, you're being an arsehole. That was... <laughs> I don't like the big Transformer movies. I think they're shit. I prefer the stuff I used to watch. But I don't go on about it because people like them and I don't want to be an arsehole. Mm-hmm. So if you, if you you know you keep going about Doctor Who and, and, oh, they're not making it like I want it to be made, well, if you keep going on about that, then you're an arsehole. Mm-hmm. It's like the Time Ladies we mentioned earlier on. There's been uh, some idiot put a website up calling the Time Lords or something. Uh, and, uh, oh, look at us, we're, we're blokes and we like Doctor Who and all these women telling us what to do now. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's never been an all-male show. No, it hasn't. It's always been women in it. I mean... Well, not even that. It's never been a, a show that's gone for an all-male fandom, mm-hmm. particularly. It's gone for a gay fandom. Yep, definitely. Definitely had the massive gay following. But it's never been a show which said this is for girls, uh, this is for boys, or this is for girls, or this is. It's always been a. Sh- it's like a family show. It's a show for everyone. Yeah. I mean, if it was aimed at boys and boys alone, they wouldn't have had a pretty boy David Tennant in it. It was aimed at children. Yeah. At the end of the world, to stop acting like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you're completely right. It was aimed at. Yeah, was, well, <laughs> the reason David Tennant's there wasn't for girls, was it? It's Russell T. Davis. Because he fancied him. Uh, and that's, that's why Rose Tyler ultimately pissed me off. It wasn't because she was a silly little girl. It's because it's Russell T. Davis. It's not even a gay character. It's just Russell T. Davis. <laughs> but that's there you go. Why, uh, 12 turned out to be my favourite all along. I loved 11. I thought 11 was brilliant. And then 12 came along and it was... Because Peter Capaldi's absolutely bloody gorgeous. And they've all liked him. <laughs> Which is weird because... Oh, I'm not an idiot. I can see Jodie Whittaker as a very nice-looking lady. Mm-hmm. But it's I, the it's same thing with Wonder Woman. I couldn't possibly fancy Wonder Woman. I, I know that's, that's insane because Gal Gadot is, like, amazingly beautiful. Mm, yes, um, don't, don't, pretty, yeah. 
don't fancy him at all. It's Wonder Woman. Why would you fancy Wonder Woman? It's Wonder Woman. <laughs> it's the Doctor. Why would I fancy the Doctor <laughs> at the end of the day? <laughs> well, definitely. I just, I, I don't think of the Doctor in that way. Because <laughs> let's face it, the Doctor, I really hope they keep that and don't have her having liaisons with people now that she's a girl. Because mm. I don't like it. I didn't like I'll accept it with Ten, because that was just Ten's quirk. And it wasn't really him instigating it half the time. Mm. It was just because he was a good-looking fella. Yeah. I do think the romance was called, what, what would you call River and the Doctor's relationship, marriage, romantic? Mm. Um, no. They loved each other, didn't they? They There was a sort of deeper than romance. Mm-hmm. They got each other. Yeah. And there were very few people in the universe that get the Doctor. It's like um, Sarah and the Doctor. Mm-hmm. There's no, you know, no way f- was Four and Sarah not spunking in the TARDIS. No, there's no, there's no way they were, and and possibly in real life. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know about that. No, no one knows about that at all. Mm-hmm. But Joe, it's like Joe and the Doctor. I'm convinced. Yeah. And and they probably were doing it in real life, <laughs> 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 but allegedly. Um, but yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know about romance and the Doctor. I'm very much old-fashioned in that, and I don't like no hanky panky in the TARDIS, or not overtly anyway. Yeah. They just—it's not about that. You said, did, did that make sense? It just to me, it's not a show about that. Mm-hmm. No, it's, I, it's just a show about everything really, a little bit here, a little bit there. Yeah, and it's like with Ten and Rose again. I'll accept it because she was an emotional crutch for him when he was getting over the time war. So that's basically what that was about. Mm. But I, I don't think, I think that it didn't get good again until Donna came into it when she absolutely refused to have any sort of anything, any suggestions about in the TARDIS. I want me to mate with you. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to mate. You want me to mate with you? You want to mate. <laughs> that's it, it's gotta be said that. You just want to mate. <laughs> no, I mean, Martian boy. Um, she's fantastic. She, uh, I'll say it again on that that list. I said that Donna was my favourite sort of new. I said I did a cl- favourite classic and a favourite new who classic was Leela because I love Leela, mm. and um, cl- the new who was Donna because she's just the best. Yeah. She's the the only ca- only companion that actually got loads of character development. Uh, admittedly, Russell C Davies fucked with that right yeah, up to the end. That was ridiculous, but um. Rose didn't get that much character development. She was pretty much the same when she left as when she started. Yeah. Just a bit more knowledgeable about the world, but, you know, still a shop girl at the end of the day. And Martha, retarded. <laughs> she but went back. Done so much with Martha. But oh, had she... to make her fall in love with the Doctor. She could have been the new Liz Shaw. Mm-hmm. So, again, I was listening to the Doctor Who and the Silurians on the Reconstructed soundtrack. I'm thinking, fucking hell, Liz Shaw was great. Mm-hmm. She was Awesome was Liz Shaw. Yes, she was. I loved Liz. She she was brilliant because she was she was the right mix of not stupid mm-hmm. and also didn't know. So mm-hmm. if she asked the doctor a question, it wasn't because she was stupid and just thick. She didn't know something, so she asked the question to find out. Mm-hmm. And kind of the same with Joe Grant. Eventually, I mean, I think I I always think that Joe Grant is unfairly maligned, and although she's just pretty and stupid, I never. I don't see that. Mm-hmm. I see a character that was really naive and didn't know much about the world, who left the Doctor knowing loads about the world. Yeah. Um, for instance, her very first appearance, she gets inside straight away by the Master. Mm-hmm. Whereas in front of her in space, she does that thing where she says the nursery rhymes and he can't hypnotise her mm-hmm. because she's learned, because she's grown as a character. It's the same with Sarah Jane. It's again Sarah Jane. She grew as a character. Whereas I just didn't see that with Rose and Martha. Mm-hmm. Martha just got it turned into this doughy eyed puppy dog. Yeah. Oh, please let me, Doctor, please. And then she finally got Tom Ellis. Mm-hmm. And then, because Russell T. Davis, because they couldn't get Tom Ellis, or because they couldn't be asked, or I don't know why. Oh, she married Mickey. What? Why? No, no. If anything, Mickey married the guy from. Parallel Earth. <laughs> the other fella that he was fighting Cyber. He gave Mickey a really kick-ass ending. Yeah, and then uh, ruined it a little bit. 
Oh. And ruined it, and ruined it with Martha, just for expediency. Oh, well, they'd marry each other, wouldn't they? No! Why would they marry each other? Doesn't make sense. What's Martha and Mickey got in common? Absolutely nothing. I mean, he's, with the best one in the world, a bit thick. <laughs> I love Mickey, but he's a bit thick. He's, he's technically minded, if anything. He's, he's good at technical stuff. Yes. Um, but Martha's like, super intelligent PhD med student mm -hmm. working with unit for fuck's sake but any, uh, look it, we'll talk about that another time um, at the end of the day I really really enjoyed Twice Upon a Time was it my favourite Christmas special? probably not mm. um, I think that one has to go down the, uh, I think for me that one has to go to the time of the doctor either that or um, Christmas Carol I really like Christmas Carol because yeah. Gambon's in it and he was really good. Um, but it, it's, a, it's, I'd say third favourite one. I'd say Christmas Carol, Time of the Doctor and then this one. Yeah. Time but of the Doctor specifically for me because of the wooden Cyberman. That was just brilliant. Man. That was a, <laughs> yeah, that was, that was really good. Uh, plus I like Naked Doctor. Yes. Naked Doctor. And it also had, um, Sheila Davis, I think her name is, Aretta from Vengeance and Varos. Yeah. She's, she's Clara's grandmum in that, and that was pretty awesome. I like Clara's grandmum. <laughs> well, she liked Nick and Doctor. Yes. I also like the fact, um, just before we go, I also like the fact that, uh, that, that scene with the Doctor and Amy right at the end. Mm -hmm. Both of them bald as coots. <laughs> Cause, um, he was bald for that film he did, which I forget, and she was bald for Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, who both had their wigs. So both had wigs on, which is, I think, it's hilarious. I know they're great. Um, but yeah, um, that's we'll talk about it. to watch it um, because I'm re watching uh, series uh, five. And All right. Because, oh, I want Amy back, but she can never come back. No, well, you know, she definitely, definitely can't. Um, the, the worst bit about that was the, and they never broadcast it, but was the, the letter to Brian. Yeah, I know that. There was only a ninja just hopping around, and I saw that. Well, <laughs> um, I think that's who Bradley Walsh's character should be like, yeah. effectively. Um, but whether whether that happens, I I don't know. But uh, I I would like it to be top that character. But which we shall find out in awesome yeah. next week. We oh sorry, next time should I say yeah. it's uh, back to Earth, back to Unit, back to the early seventies, or is it? We'll talk about the Unit dating contract. <laughs> Because that shit just good. Look, it's the 80s, right? It's the early 80s. Let's just say that. But yeah. we will never, we will never know. But it's all about Third Doctor. It's all about John Pertwee. I finally find out where that comes from. On, on TV Cream, they say John Pertwee. And I always wonder why they said that. And it's because, I think, uh, there's a, on the robot DVD, there's an extra where Bernard oh, Lodge, I think it is Bernard Lodge, um, tells us about how he made the, the time tunnel vortex stuff on the titles. Um, and he, he calls John Pertwee, John Pertwee. He says John Pertwee. And it's like, no, it's Pertwee, surely. Yeah. Well, John, John Pertwee. But his son, Sean, he always pronounces his name as Sean Pertwee. Pertwee, yes. Yeah, so it's Sean, Sean, Sean Pertwee. And John Pertwee. Do as I say! Uh, <laughs> we will talk about, uh, as, um, the wife in space calls him the pompous Tory next time. Because <laughs> uh, he, he's awesome. Also, yes, if you've never checked it out, check out Adventure with the Wife in Space because it's funny. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very funny uh, website. Anyway, if you want to find us, you can find us on uh, Facebook. It's uh, facebook.com forward slash Nerva Beacon Podcast. If you want to find us on Twitter, it's at Nerva Beacon Pod. Uh, Lee, where can they find you if you want them to find you? Well, I'm back on Twitter, so you can find me at Lee Fits In. Which she doesn't. <laughs> I don't, not at all. <laughs> which is why we hang out together, because yeah. neither of us fit in, uh, which is great. Um, anywhere else? Um, uh, yeah, Instagram's private at the moment for a reason, so you can put uh, Lee Wild Time. If, you, if I like the look of what you post, I'll uh, add you back there. <laughs> uh, I'm not on Instagram because I'm a 41-year-old man. Um, so yeah. Who still takes selfies? I have not that I've taken a selfie for ages. Like it's mostly landscape at the moment. 
yeah, I don't know, anybody needs to see a selfie from me, but there you go. Yeah. Uh, if you want to find me on Twitter, it's at Cymru Nerd Cave. Uh, and if you want to find me on Facebook, it's Glenn Jakeman. Please send a message if uh, you, you're wanting to add me, but otherwise I won't know who you are and I won't add you, uh, which is fair enough. Um, Lee, say bye-bye to all the peoples. Bye-bye, all the peoples. Bye-bye, all the peoples. We shall speak to you very soon. Bye-bye, Finnick.